join us in, so let's take a listen to the president. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everybody, please have a seat. Thank you. Well, it, it, it is, it, I love you back. It's great to be here. Great to be back in New Hampshire. Now, some of you may remember, I, I've spent a little time in this state. I've had beers at Peddler's Daughter. I man the scoop at I Ice Cream Socials from Dover to Hudson. I've walked Main Street in Concord and visited with folks in all 10 counties. I, I even uh, once flew in the airport in Milan, which is, has got to be one of the only airports with a functioning wood stove. <laughs> we spent a bunch of times in this gym, caused uh, traffic jams several times, uh, and just have a, a, a lot of good friends uh, here in this state, uh, here in this city, and, and here in this uh, here in this high school. So I, I'm just grateful to all of you for taking the time to be here. Uh, I've got a couple of special thank yous to say. Uh, first of all, uh, please thank Tim Dining for the wonderful introduction and for the great work that he's doing day in, day out. I want to thank uh, David Ryan, doing a great job as principal here at Nashua North. Mayor Donna Lee uh, Lozo is here. Give her a big round of applause. Your outstanding governor, John Lynch, is here. Give John a big round of applause. Three great members of Congress. Senator Gene Shaheen. Congressman Paul Hodes. Congresswoman Carol Shea Porter. And behind me, I've got uh, the outstanding administrator for our Small Business Administration, uh, who hails from these parts, Karen Mills. Give Karen a big round of applause. So I want to spend a bunch of time hearing from you, answering your questions, but uh, if you'll indulge me, I want to make some, some brief remarks on the front end. You know, I've had the privilege of getting to know people here in New Hampshire. I've seen firsthand that spirit of independence and spirit of self-reliance. I know how hard all of you work and how tough and resilient you are. But I also know that people here in New Hampshire have been tested by the last two years, just like people all across the country. We've gone through the deepest recession since the Great Depression, and folks here have had their lives uprooted by lost jobs and foreclosed homes, shuttered businesses, vanished savings. Many good, hardworking people who met their responsibilities are now struggling, in part because folks on Wall Street and people in Washington didn't meet their responsibilities. So when I took office, we knew the first thing we had to do was to break the back of this recession. And sometimes that meant doing some things that weren't easy, doing some things that weren't popular. Lord knows it wasn't popular to prevent our financial system from collapsing. We had to throw a lifeline to some of the very firms that had helped cause this crisis in the first place. But it was the right thing to do, because if we hadn't taken those steps, the entire system could have gone down and taken our economy and millions of families and businesses with it. We couldn't afford that. And because of the steps we've taken, the markets have now stabilized. Nobody's worrying about another Great Depression like they were just a year ago. And the worst of the storm has passed. But I don't need to tell you the devastation remains. Today, one in ten Americans still can't find work. That's why jobs has to be our number one focus in 2010. And we're going to start where most 
New jobs start with small businesses. These are the companies that begin in basements and garages when an entrepreneur takes a chance on his dream or a worker decides it's time she becomes her own boss. There are companies like ARC Energy, which I just visited before I came here. It's terrific. <laughs> there you go. A little booster. Now these, these folks are hard at work on a new manufacturing process for ultra-efficient LED lights that will make them more affordable for people all across the country and around the world. The technology they've created is the only of its kind in the entire world. They're this little business just on Amherst Street, but they've got the potential to revolutionize an entire industry right here in Nashville. Right here in Nashville. Now, small businesses like ARC Energy have created roughly 65% of all new jobs over the past decade and a half. So we need to make it easier for them to open their doors, to expand their operations, to hire more workers. That's why I've already proposed a new tax credit for more than one million small businesses that hire new workers or raise wages, and a tax incentive for all businesses, large and small, to invest in new plants and equipment. And while we're at it, we should eliminate all capital gains taxes on small business investment so these folks can get the capital they need to grow and create jobs, and when they start making a profit, they can put put those profits back into the business. Now that's particularly critical right now because bank lending standards have tightened since the financial crisis. And many small businesses are still struggling to get loans. And that's why today I'm announcing a proposal to take $30 billion of the money that was repaid by Wall Street banks, now that they're back on their feet, Take that $30 billion and use it to create a new small business lending fund that will provide capital for community banks on Main Street. It's the small local banks that work most closely with small businesses. They usually provide them their first loan. They watch them grow through good times and bad. The more loans these smaller banks provide to credit-worthy small businesses, the better deal we'll give them on capital from this fund that we've set up. And if you combine it with my proposal back in December to continue waiving fees and increasing guarantees for SBA-backed loans, all this will help small banks do even more of what our economy needs, and that's ensure that small businesses are once again the engine of job growth in America. Now, I'm convinced we can make that happen. This is just one example of what we've been doing to create jobs this past year. As some of you might remember, last February we passed the Recovery Act, which had three parts. One third was tax relief for small businesses and for 95 percent of you, 95 percent of working families. One third of the Recovery Act was emergency relief, like increasing unemployment benefits and helping states keep teachers and police officers and firefighters from losing their jobs. And one-third was putting people to work on infrastructure and renewable energy and medical research and more. Now, if you hear some of the critics, they'll say, well, the Recovery Act, I don't know if that's really worked, because we still have high unemployment. But what they fail to understand is that every economist from the left and the right has said, because of the Recovery Act, what we've started to see uh, is at least a couple of million jobs that have either been created or would have been lost. The problem is seven million jobs were lost during the course of this recession. So we've still got a big hole to fill. It's going to be absolutely critical that Congress acts over the next several months to make sure that we don't lose sight of the fact that even though the economy is now growing again, almost 6 percent last quarter, people have not started hiring again. And we've got to do everything we can to put people back to work because we need a sustainable recovery over the long term. <laughs>